uh, 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 update video. Dinosaurs. Hey everyone, remember me? Yeah, I know, it's been a while. Five months of no updates is pretty rough, but before you grab those pitchforks, I come with a peace offering in the form of some new animation tests that might just blow your socks off, so buckle up. From here on out, I'm committed to posting a brand new update video at the end of each month. Another month, another video. And I'll see you all again at the end of the month for the next update. Yeah, about that. It's been a hectic five months since my last update, and I owe you all an explanation for the radio silence. So, first of all, yes, I'm still working on the movie, and yes, it's still only just me. Hey, it's me from the future! Actually, I'm from the present. He's from the distant past. I originally shot this video almost two months ago with the intention of posting it by mid-November. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to carve out the time to edit this video until just after Christmas, hence its very late arrival. But I managed to squeak it in just before the new year. Anyway, let's hear what me from early November has to say for himself. Life has a funny way of throwing you curveballs, and boy did I catch a few over the summer that unfortunately pulled me away from this project quite a bit. I'm not going to go into the details as it involves my personal life, and I don't think we're quite there yet in our relationship. Suffice it to say, it was enough to impact my productivity on the movie. I was also offered some freelance consulting work for a few weeks that I couldn't turn down because, as I mentioned before, I no longer have a full-time job. But I do still have full-time bills, and any additional funds I can bring in will of course help with any out-of-pocket movie expenses that may arise. Put it on the card! Anyway, the lack of update videos certainly wasn't for lack of trying, but every time I thought I had a moment to sit down and film a new update, something else seemed to always pop up. And not for nothing, but putting together one of these update videos is no walk in the park. Despite how they may look, it actually takes me quite a bit of time to plan these videos out, set up the lights, record the b-roll, edit everything together, etc. And because I was dealing with a myriad of distractions over these past few months, whenever I was able to focus on undergrads, I felt like my time was better spent making progress on the actual movie, rather than making update videos about the movie. Because I do feel the clock constantly ticking, as everyone keeps reminding me, it's been six years since the movie's pre-production was kickstarted, so I am painfully aware of how much everybody feels like this is dragging on. And believe me, no one feels it more than me. Anyway, that's where I've been, doing some freelance work on the side, juggling life stuff, and trying to keep this animation train on the tracks. Now that things have settled down a wee bit, they haven't. I'm finally able to carve out the time to film this update. And two months later, I'm finally carving out the time to finish editing it. So let's talk about where I'm at with the animatic. For those not familiar with the term, an animatic is like a rough draft of the movie. It's basically all the panels from the storyboard played in sequence, often with a soundtrack that helps us nail down the timing and flow of the story. And it is a crucial step between storyboarding and the actual animation. I have been making solid progress on cutting the animatic together, but it has definitely been a lot more work than I anticipated. Remember when I mentioned we ran out of Kickstarter money a while back? Well, that left us with some rather large chunks of the movie storyboards in a really rough place. Like, is that supposed to be a person or a particularly expressive potato kind of rough? So as I've been cutting the animatic together, I've had to go back and clean up some of those problematic sections of the boards just to make the characters look even remotely recognizable. It's not exactly how I plan to spend my time, but hey, that's par for the course with this project. And the other thing I've been doing, even though I said I was taking a break from R&D for a while, is working on some more animation tests, which I'm excited to share with you. As all these AI tools are evolving at such a breakneck pace, whenever I see something interesting that I think might be beneficial to our production, I can't resist testing it out. And the latest one I've been messing around with is called Runway. It's another one of those AI generative video applications, but what caught my eye about Runway is that it also allows you to upload a start frame and an end frame, and then the software attempts to generate the action in between. So I was interested to see if it might work as a potential tweening solution for some of the animation in the Undergrads movie. Tweeting, what is it? In a traditional animation pipeline, typically a lead animator won't draw all 24 frames required for one second of animation. They usually only create just the key drawings of a scene required to define the action. Then it gets passed off to a specialized artist known as an in-betweener, who will fill in the gaps between those key drawings to create that smooth illusion of motion. As you can imagine, this process of tweening is incredibly tedious and time consuming, which means it's also very expensive. For the original undergrad series, the key layouts were done here in Canada, but all of the in-betweening was actually sent overseas and handled by a whole other studio. But because we don't have the same budget as the series, ah, we don't have any budget, Jurassic Park guy. We need to find affordable tools like this that we can use to take those big budget line items out of the equation. So long story short, I took two drawings of nits and fed them into runway. And when I saw the results, 
I nearly fell out of my chair. Somehow, the AI filled in the gaps with surprisingly fluid motion, maintaining consistency in both style and detail, quickly generating between 10 to 20 frames of animation in between those two poses. And so, I experimented with a bunch of drawings of Undergrad's characters in various poses, and here are some of those results. In my initial round of tests, I was using colored drawings of the characters, but found that Runway had trouble maintaining consistency with the color from frame to frame. You can see in the test the color's kind of flickering a lot and getting a bit noisy. So then I just tried testing it out with line art, and the results were much better. Of course it means then having to go back and manually color those outputted frames, but in the long run, we'll end up with something that's far more consistent and actually usable for the movie. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised with how well Runway handled a lot of these shots, specifically with characters turning from different angles, which is always a challenge in 2D animation of getting something to convincingly rotate, particularly a character's face, and I thought Runway did a fantastic job of creating that sense of three dimensions within the 2D designs. One downside to Runway is that it is instinctively trying to generate a bunch of action between those start and end frames, when all I really wanted to do is go from pose A to pose B. So a lot of times I would get results where the character would just start doing all this wacky nonsense in between that was completely unusable. But the benefit of this software is that it generates all these in-between images very quickly, so in a matter of minutes, I was output upwards of 10 generations per shot until I got something that was usable. A lot of it came down to giving it a more specific prompt like slow motion or pose to pose so that it wouldn't try to invent quite as much animation and instead just strictly focus on the singular action that I was looking for. Then I would pick the best take, upscale it to 4K resolution in Topaz video, and then bring it into After Effects to retime the animation so that it played more smoothly and with the timing that I was originally envisioning. In some cases, I would even bring the generated animation over to my iPad to manually clean up any problematic frames using Procreate Dreams. Ideally, I'd love to see Runway add functionality to allow for additional keyframes to be taken into consideration when generating a shot, or at the very least, a middle frame to help further guide the generated in-betweens. Hey, good news! Since originally filming this video, Runway has added that feature of a middle keyframe into their generative video tool, so now you can upload up to three keyframes in a shot, which should help with creating more precise animation in those outputs. Also, as of the posting of this video, Runway only offers two different duration options, five seconds and 10 seconds. And it would be great to have shorter durations to play with, like two seconds or even one second, for those instances where you're trying just to get from one pose to another. But again, I'm trying to use this software in a way that it was really not intended for. That being said, I think the potential here is huge. It could save us tons of time and allow us to create smoother animations with that traditional animation look without breaking the bank. Now, of course, this method isn't gonna work for every scenario in the movie. For example, if a character has to deliver a very specific performance that requires a bunch of gestures with specific timing, runway isn't a great option because you really don't have any control over things like that. Much like a box of chocolates, with those AI-generated in-betweens, you never know what you're gonna get. But for a shot where there are multiple characters in the scene and the peripheral characters don't have to do anything other than just stand there, but you still want to create some life and movement, this would be amazing because you can have those peripheral characters looking around, making different expressions, slight gestures, with as few as two key drawings. Whereas in the original series, we would typically just have those peripheral or background characters standing frozen in a single pose to cut down on animation. And unlike the other tests I showcased in previous update videos, which involved a 3D to 2D pipeline, using this runway method doesn't require any 3D modeling, nor does it require drawing 80 different poses of a character to train a Laura on. So for secondary characters and background characters that are only going to appear in a handful of shots in the movie, using this runway tweening method would definitely be a more efficient and cost-effective solution, again, for certain types of shots. Is this going to replace animators? Absolutely not. We'll still need skilled animators to draw those key poses, shape the performance, refine any problematic in-betweens, and add that human touch that makes hand-drawn animation animation so special. We're still figuring out how to best integrate all these different methods into our workflow. There are kinks to iron out and we need to find the right balance between AI assistance and human creativity. But I'm excited about the possibilities. Anyway, that's what I've been working on. As always, for everyone still here after all this time, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, I apologize that I wasn't able to keep up with the monthly updates like I had originally planned, but I promise I will do my best to at least avoid having another five to six month dry spell like we just had. Until then, keep being awesome, and I'll see you soon. Ish. That was a mess. Oof. It was good except for the f***ed up. <laughs> for the many, many f***.